Okay, um, I'm Linda, by the way. Uh, I have been requesting for years that the many pedestrian lanes that were raised be fixed, you know, shaved down and all that kind of stuff because there were tripping hazards. And last year for months, I complained in meetings and also by emails that there was one sidewalk in particular that was raised two and a half inches. I pointed out exactly where the sidewalk was, um, just on a pedestrian lane just off of Miller Creek Road. And it was definitely a safety hazard for pedestrians and a liability to the district. So many of you, I think, know that I'm the lucky one that tripped over this hazard. Um, I had, I've been walking this pedestrian lane for years. Over a hundred times I've passed by this raised sidewalk and I've always walked around it. But this particular time I heard this really loud noise. There was a landscaper up on the median and he had his, uh, you know, noise machine, whatever it was going on. And I looked up for one second and over I went. Both knees very badly damaged, both arms scraped. So, I've been in pain for three months. I smashed both of my knees on the sidewalk, and this is the one that I had surgery on five years before, so that was really damaged, uh, re damaged. I've received thousands of dollars in medical. Um, treatments, went to urgent care, orthopedists, had x-rays, six weeks of physical therapy, and finally I got a cortisone injection in my left knee because it was not, uh, the pain was getting worse actually, not getting better. So I just wanted to say that all of this damage to me, 75 year old lady who loves to walk, loves to walk dogs, can't walk that much anymore, not doing any housework, not doing any yard work, not enjoying my life, laying down with my legs raised because of the swelling, and only because the park department failed to fix this uh, safety hazard and district liability. So I just want to ask you guys, and I know sometimes you listen, sometimes you don't, depending on who's talking, but I would like to ask, when the public raises an issue, especially one that can cause injury, I would like the district to be proactive, not reactive. Um, the hazard was fixed the day after I injured myself, after I came into the office and complained again, bleeding and injured and, and limping. So please, Listen to some of us when we ask for things like this. Think about liability. Think about injury to old folks. Just please just think about it and be proactive, not reactive. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to say something. Thank you, Linda, for bringing that up. Luke, um, can you provide any other details or insight on that? Um, in terms of the, the wetland is talking about and what was done to remediate the situation? Uh, yeah, the area in question, which apparently was one of two different um, spots, two different walkways that had some raised lips that didn't get addressed by the, um, the concrete company that we had hired, uh, probably because they were too much of a lift for them to be. Excuse to me, quit. point of order? Yeah, um, actually, Luke's talking right now, so. I know, but Luke. it's a point of order. This is open time for the public. You just had your open time. I know, but he's not public. No, you had your open time. What I'm saying it, is. It, hold on a second. He's you not had public. Your, you, had, you had your open time. You raised a point. I'm getting clarifying information from staff. You can take that offline and do it. Uh, why? This, no, this no, is that's open not, that's time. You don't allow discussion during open time. For Which, clarification of staff, what you, you do. That's well, how you guys don't. The board doesn't. Nobody does. I can, <clears throat> I can ask staff clarifying questions if the public raises a concern or a question. That's completely within my rights. And it's not a timed situation. You had three minutes. 
there's no time limit on um, discussion between staff. Well, according to the Brown Act, that's, there is. that's not accurate. The Brown Act says there is a time okay, limit. Th this is not a two way dialogue right now, so I'm going to go back to Lou and okay. get the clarifying information. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so there were uh, a couple spots that the concrete company was not able to address because of the, the size of the, the lift of the concrete. And um, Linda had brought up the, the, the area in question um, to us. Our crew addressed one area that um, was on a separate walking path, not the one um, that Linda was speaking of, it's the second one down. And, um, but we did go out and they were able to uh, grind down the, the lip and add some additional concrete to smooth the slope of the tripping hazard. Um, so it's no longer, um, you know, a, a raised uh, tripping hazard at this point. So that's what was done after that. And then do we get um, annual inspections of the concrete that we manage for these types of situations? You mean, do we perform or do we receive from an outside entity? Either one. Uh, yeah, I mean, as things come up, that's, that was the impetus for hiring the concrete company, like the concrete shaver company in the first place, was we had a number of areas that were um, needing to be addressed uh, beyond our you know, ability to do that. Um, so that's, that was just part of an ongoing uh, areas that were identified, and we had thought that one had gotten covered, but you know, needed to be followed up. So. Is it an annual inspection? Uh, not officially. No. It's more of a, you know, as, as we see areas, we identify them. And, right. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Well. Can I add on to that? When we bring this company out, they actually, we give them a, a scope of area, and they go through and identify areas as well, and mark areas, so that way they have a, a plan work. They send us a report that says, we've discovered X number of cuts needed in this area. So in the last two years, uh, we actually spent a little over $15,000 with them having them perform this work. So they did half of it uh, in the more uh, high traffic areas the first year and the other half the second year. I, I just add on that the one thing we did not receive from that company was identification of any of those areas that they ended up not being able to address. So that's where we had a, a few spots that we assumed were taken care of, but we didn't they can tell us, oh, we weren't able to do this particular spot, this particular spot. So that's something I would have hoped to have received from that company, but they didn't give us a report on that, so. Right, okay. Okay, 